is October 2nd, 1997. Retired Air Force Captain Yorange Holanda is in his expensive home in Cabo Frio, Brazil. The former pilot and parachutist retired in 1992, but since then has struggled with illness. Captain Holanda had been suffering a chronic depressive disorder since the early 1990s. In my personal view, this depressive process originated from something that he had experienced a long time ago in the Amazon. Later that night, his daughter climbs the steps to her father's room. She finds a shocking scene. Her father is dead. He appears to have strangled himself. Was this a suicide brought on by mental illness or by something more sinister? Just two months earlier, the captain had given this exclusive interview to UFO researchers A.J. Javierd and Marco Petit. Both men study and document UFO incidents. This object went to Kalaras, then kept going as if it covered the Amazon in strips. There was an intelligence doing this. Four months into the operation, they ordered us to stop. Some UFO experts maintain that Captain Holanda did not kill himself, but was murdered because he'd said too much about a series of frightening UFO encounters, some allegedly fatal, which took place in the Amazon jungle 20 years earlier. He gave eyewitness testimony based on his work as a military man who committed one of the most serious operations in the world of ufology. There is something very strange that the Air Force doesn't want revealed. I don't believe it was suicide. Holanda's death is connected to something beyond the normal. He left a very clear message that we are being visited. Captain Holanda's UFO sightings began here, on the island of Colores, at the mouth of the Amazon River in Brazil. Though it is only a two-hour drive from the bustling city of Belém, it is a world away in terms of culture and technology. They are poor people. They are fishermen and farmers, people who lead a very peaceful life. Like most people in Brazil, the 2,000 residents of Colores are predominantly Roman Catholic. But the island's remoteness has given rise to many local superstitions. They believe the island is mysterious, that a lot of phenomena occur there. The people of Colaris have their legends and their traditions. 78-year-old Emidio Campos Oliveira is a longtime resident of the island. Nearly 30 years ago, he was part of an extraordinary and disturbing series of events that transformed life on Colaris forever. I could feel it once the light went away. I felt the burning. It was here. The mark was kind of a circle. It was red in the middle of a black spot. It began on a warm night in October 1977. Around 11 p.m., Oliviera is ready for bed. His wife kisses him goodnight as he settles into a hammock in the living room where he likes to sleep. Suddenly, a beam of light floods the room. 
It appears to be coming from above. It is so powerful that it penetrates the ceramic tiles of his roof. A bright light appeared before my eyes, coming down from the ceiling on top of me. It attacked my thigh. I felt a burning sensation. The light was quite bright. Quite bright. As quickly as it came, the light disappears. Unable to find an explanation for what has just happened, he tries to go back to sleep. Days later, at about 8 p.m., 24-year-old Orivaldo Malakia Spinero, a local fisherman, sets out with a friend for some night fishing. I was on the beach and we were throwing out the net, but the net wasn't catching anything. So we pulled it back in and left to see if we could find another position to see where we could catch some fish. The two fishermen wait patiently for their catch. Suddenly, Pinheiro's friend notices a low-flying, bright light in the sky. There was no noise, no smell. He looked out to the sea, and this light was coming from the direction of the sea toward us. We got scared and took off running. The two men race towards town. Panic-stricken, they tell other residents about what they've just seen. They learn that they are not the only ones to experience these mysterious sightings. In fact, dozens of people say that over the past few weeks, they've been chased as if they're being hunted down and attacked by the lights. 25-year-old dentist Lucia Helena Marquez says she too had a strange encounter on a nearby beach. We were at the market and there was a commotion. This object appeared and everyone ran to the seashore. We saw two lights hovering in the air. One light would be on and the other would be off. They kept doing it like a signal. The colors that we saw most were red. Red was the brightest color, then green, red, green, and yellow in the back. Then it just disappeared. As residents of Colaris struggle to make sense of these strange occurrences, two hours away in Belém, 25-year-old reporter Carlos Mendez gets a call in his office. I first heard pieces of information through telephone calls from people linked to the town. They were saying the newspaper should go there because these lights were appearing and the people were becoming very afraid. Mendez, who works for the newspaper O Estado do Para, calls his photographer. The two men leave for Colores that night. When they arrive, the men are swarmed by residents wanting to tell their stories about being